Wait! Stop! Don't eat that food! Who are you? What are you doing in our house? I'm from the future. I'm here to warn you, don't eat that food. Why not? The eggs. They're full of cholesterol. What? Cholesterol. It, it clogs up your arteries. Eating even just one egg can dramatically increase your chance of heart attack. Don't eat eggs. Oh my god, thank you. You're welcome. Godspeed. Well, I guess I better take those eggs. Wait! Stop! You're back! Yeah. We were wrong about the eggs. How? Well, it turns out there's two types of cholesterol. There's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, and eggs actually have both. So you can eat eggs, but just don't eat the egg yolks. So stick with the egg whites. Thank yes, thank you. Yeah. Godspeed! Yeah, yeah, okay, so it turns out that the amount of cholesterol in a food doesn't actually affect how much cholesterol ends up in your blood. The eggs are probably fine. In fact, we sort of don't even know what cholesterol is. But the steak! You can't eat the steak! Why not? Turns out that red meat increases your chance of heart attack. You have to cut out red meat, so no steak! Thank you. Godspeed. Well, no, no steak, mister. What? Wait! We were wrong about the steak! It's the toast. Man was not meant to eat bread. What do you mean, man was not meant to eat bread? Well, if you think about it, human beings should really only be eating what our Paleolithic ancestors ate. So, therefore, no bread, no toast. How do you know what our Paleolithic ancestors ate? Well, we, we just have to guess, right? I mean, we don't have any way of knowing what... <sighs> okay. Went back to the Paleolithic. They are not doing well. I don't know what we were thinking. If anything, we should all be eating a lot more bread. Jeez. So I guess just um, ignore everything I've said and exercise. Exercise, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you guys could probably use it. You've been just sitting here for the last 35 years. Well, it's been five minutes. Right. Time travel. All right, well, Godspeed. Turns out it's genetic. Doesn't matter whether you exercise or what you eat. I'm sorry I ruined your meal. I need 10 minutes. <clears throat> Do you want some eggs? I'd love some. Hi, my name is Brooke and I'm a student from Idaho State University and I'm also a dietetic intern and today I'll be doing a food demo for you guys and this the recipe that was selected for this food demo is the Mediterranean chickpea salad and we chose this recipe because it's quick and easy it's a very simple recipe it's also very budget friendly and it doesn't take much time and it has a lot of great nutrients and a variety of foods in it so to get started, um, most of my ingredients have already been measured, but we'll go ahead and walk through step by step of this recipe. So first we'll be taking two tablespoons of our olive oil, and we're gonna be pouring this into the mixing bowl to start making the dressing for this recipe. We're also gonna be using two tablespoons of lemon juice which I've also measured in advance to save time. And we're gonna add that to our mixing bowl next. And then we're gonna add a few spices. So we have red pepper flakes, dried oregano, 
And after that, we'll be adding a little bit of garlic and onion. Okay, perfect. So for the onion, I'm gonna cut that up and demonstrate a few knife safety skills that I recently learned from my preceptor during this internship rotation. So this recipe calls for half of an onion. And when you're cutting an onion, especially because they can be round and they can roll around on your cutting board, it's good to have a flat side so that it's not moving when you're cutting it so that you don't accidentally um, hurt yourself. Um, it's good to cut off both sides and make sure that your fingers aren't sticking out too much. It's good to have them kind of curved a little bit so that you're less likely to accidentally cut yourself. So when I cut this onion, first I make incisions like in this way and then we'll we'll rotate it and cut the other way. I've just learned that this is a much faster way to cut an onion, a little bit easier. Okay, and we'll rotate it. Most of the other ingredients in this recipe we've already cut up and diced to help save time so that you guys don't have to watch me cut everything. But I'll go ahead and talk about the, the ingredients that we're gonna add after this. So we have some garbanzo beans, um, some chickpeas, and we also have a red bell pepper, and we also have some cucumber. Okay, so I love that this recipe has a variety of different food groups in it. We've got some vegetables, we've got a little bit of protein from the chickpeas. We've also got some spices to add flavor, which is always good substitute instead of using too much salt in recipes. Um, and this recipe is great for a snack. It can also be turned into a meal. Um, I love that if you have the time, you could take this recipe and put it on a salad or maybe a wrap. It's light, but it's also filling. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spin, or kind of whisk all this together. Just kind of mix it well in your mixing bowl and let it sit for a few minutes. Yeah, so that is a great question. Um, both, both on any color of onion really has lots of nutrients in it. So if you prefer to substitute a red onion with a white onion, that's perfectly fine and acceptable. Okay, so we'll let that sit for a minute. Um, so next, we're gonna go ahead and add some of our other ingredients here. I have a tomato that I need to cut up still. There we go. Okay, and I think it's only half of a tomato, so I'm just gonna discard those other pieces. Perfect. Okay, so all of our ingredients are ready now to add to the mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with these chickpeas or garbanzo beans. 
And this is one can. Um, the recipe just calls for one can. And a lot of times when you buy um, canned goods, you can rinse them or you can get low sodium to make them a little bit more heart healthy and um, get rid of that extra salt content. So these have already been rinsed and taken out. Thank you. And then next we're going to add our red bell pepper. And the recipe calls for half of a red bell pepper. But just like with the onions, you could use any color of bell peppers. It doesn't have to be red. Um, but I love the red bell peppers because they add a little bit of color to the dish. We also have our cucumber. Just one medium cucumber, already cut up and diced. We'll add that to the mix. And lastly, we'll go ahead and add in our cut tomato. Just drop that in. The last step is super easy. You just mix it all together and then if you want you can refrigerate it for a little while to let it chill in the fridge and kind of get colder. Um, or you can just eat it as is. That's perfectly fine. So just mix it all together. All right, so I'll go ahead and show the camera what the final recipe, what the recipe looks like once it's finished. And you can see it's got lots of good coloring, it smells great, it looks delicious, and we'll go ahead and allow the attendees here to sample it and get an idea of what it tastes like. But again, this is a quick and easy recipe that you can eat on the go as a snack, or you could turn it into more of a, a full meal if you wanted to put it on a salad or maybe wrap it up in a tortilla or some kind of wrap. So it's very um, easy to um, adjust this recipe to meet your needs. And um, with that, we'll go ahead and let the attendees here sample it. So for the next segment of this video, I'm going to do a little bit of education on nutrition and guidelines and how to have a well-balanced diet. So first, um, I want everybody to take a moment and complete the self-assessment to kind of gauge where you're at from a nutritional standpoint and to kind of reflect on your eating habits and your current dietary choices. Um, being self-aware is really important when it comes to making healthy choices and it's very helpful to recognize where you're at and, and where there's room for improvement. Once you've completed the self-assessment and you have a better idea of where you're at, I'd like to go ahead and focus on what is known as the plate method or you may have heard of my plate which is the current nutritional recommendations that we follow. And my plate has five different food groups. So we have our fruits, our veggies, our grains, our protein, and our dairy. And each food group has very valuable nutrients that we don't want to miss out on. So the goal with my plate is to have a variety, to have a little bit of everything present on your plate so that you're getting the benefit, the most benefit that you can out of your, your meals. So, the first food group that I want to talk about is vegetables. And vegetables are packed with good vitamins and minerals for our bodies that strengthen our immune system, that help us be strong and, and healthy. And um, vegetables come in a variety. And you can buy them in the produce section, or if you prefer frozen vegetables, that's perfectly acceptable. And you can even buy canned vegetables. Um, if you are buying canned vegetables, as I mentioned earlier, be sure to look for those that have low sodium or just be sure to rinse them off really well when you're preparing them so that you're not um, consuming too much salt. Um, with vegetables, it's also important to include our fruit. And fruit also is packed with antioxidants and minerals and vitamins that are healthy for our systems. When you do consume fruit, try to consume a whole fruit. And if you do love juice or any kind of fruit juice, try to get 100% fruit juice. That set aside, we have our grains next. And grains are so important. They are full of carbohydrates that give our bodies energy. 
And so it's really important to get our energy throughout the day through the grains that we consume. Um, most of our grains, if possible, we want to strive for whole grains. So even if you can only make half your grains whole grains, that is wonderful and that's the current recommendation. Um, and to do that, you could start with including more in your diet, such as you know brown rice or whole grain pasta or wheat bread. Um, and that will definitely help include more fiber in your diet and definitely help you get the energy you need from those carbohydrates. Um, we also have our protein section. And protein can come from a couple different sources. Um, there's animal sources, there's plant-based protein sources, and they're both very valuable and good to have in your diet. When you do consume protein, it's good to keep in mind that you want lean sources of protein. So that could include your chicken, your turkey, or seafood. And as shown in the recipe today, you can use that plant-based protein like the garbanzo beans, or any beans. Um, so it doesn't have to always be animal products. You can choose a plant-based protein for your, your, um, to meet your nutritional needs as well. Um, and after that, we have our dairy section. Dairy is also a great source of protein, but dairy can sometimes have a high content of fat, and so it's recommended that you look for low-fat dairy options, like lower-fat milk or low-fat yogurt, and um, that way you're not getting excess fat content in your diet through dairy. And together, all five of these food groups create my plate. So one thing that I loved about the recipe that we made today is that it had your veggies, it had your garbanzo beans, so a little bit of protein in there. Um, and you can include it, like we were talking about earlier, in a wrap and get your grains that way. So I love that with my plate, it's really adaptable and flexible to meet your interests and what foods you like. Um, it's easy to have a variety and personalize it to your nutritional needs and your personal likes and dislikes with food. So that was a great question asked, which was how much protein do we need throughout the day? And based on a 2,000 calorie diet, you want about five and a half to six ounces of protein, which is about two decks of cards, if you were to measure it out visually just to see. A great website that you can access at home is myplate.gov, which also has a calculator available to you on their website, because the protein intake definitely depends on your age and your weight, so there's different variables when calculating how much protein you should consume each day. So that is a great resource and website that you can use at home to calculate your protein needs. So a wonderful question was asked, which was, is it okay to eat the same vegetables every day? And while you could eat the same vegetables every day and still get good nutrients from it, it's great to include a variety of vegetables in your diet. And when you think about a variety of vegetables, so many vegetables have different colors and shapes and sizes, and they all carry with them different nutrients inside. So by expanding your variety, hopefully you'll be getting more nutrients into your diet that way. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about how you can shop on a budget. And there's a wonderful handout to go along with this that I would highly recommend you read on your personal time. It's got lots of great tips and tricks to help you shop on a budget. So the first thing I want to talk about is having a plan for when you go shopping at the grocery store and knowing what ingredients you want to buy. And that way when you come home, you kind of have everything you need to prep your meals and you're not scrambling at the last minute. And by planning, you can reduce the cost of certain expenses by maybe you're not buying other things that are distracting because you don't know what you want to make. You have a plan, you go in and you can get what you need. And you'll kind of be able to calculate your costs that way in advance and make adjustments as needed. Um, another great thing is sometimes, you know, food goes bad and so if you can freeze the leftovers for your meals then you won't be wasting as much food and if that can take place of another meal then you won't have to go buy more food to make for that. Um, and something else too about this recipe that we made today is that a lot of the ingredients were low cost and very budget friendly. So um, some of these ingredients were vegetables, for example, which you could go to the store and try to buy vegetables that are in season that might cost a little bit less, or you can go buy canned vegetables, which sometimes don't cost as much. Um, 
You can also grow your own garden at home, just like we had cucumbers in here and red bell peppers. If you love to garden, that's a great way to save money and to be able to use and eat the food that you grow. Another great tip is to just um, eat your meals at home instead of eating out. Sometimes fast food can be very expensive and if you have the opportunity to meal prep or make your meals at home, you'll be less likely to spend all that extra money on fast food or processed products. And the recipe we made today was very quick and it wasn't time consuming, but it was a good healthy snack, something that you can have on hand. Um, and healthy snacks that have nutrients are going to be much better for you than processed goods or foods that you might buy when you're eating out. So that's another great tip is save that money that you might normally spend on all the fast food and try to prepare healthy meals at home that are low cost and don't take too much time and are packed with good nutrients.